Hey everyone, how are you doing? So, what about the media says about people on high functioning autism spectrum or Asperger's blaming themselves about being despaired and negative about their lives? So let's talk about this from my possessive experience and also how to really debunk, debunk this mean. Did I make myself depressive? GB researchers are uh, stochastic expectation looking from their possessive towards us we're actually blaming ourselves that putting our, ourselves depressive. So there's the line between here. We're all saying, especially myself, for crying out loud, now, psychiatry is not inclusive or accessible. So a lot of people with disability, especially in wheelchair, kept saying it every single day. Uh, like public transport is not accessible for them. They can't get there, get in places. It's the same with people with autism. Um, it feels like they cannot participate or communicate socially with other people. That is not feeling game inclusive. And the other line of perspective, which is the very typical or able-bodied people who dot the research, media, all that network people says we need to grow up. I mean, we're gonna have to learn some particular skill. How you control not to get yourself depressed? It's absolutely outrageous. It, it actually pulled myself down. And what are we all trying to say? For many years, what I tried to say about this, it's very challenging. And there's a lot of barriers that get the people to understand from our perspective. So, why? We, why I feel depressed. I was diagnosed with autism at age of 12. That was 15 years ago. I'm, just, I'm 27 now. And I started having anxiety and depression when I was 19. That just started my first year at university. When I moved away from home um, to transition, um, adjusting myself. But the social environment, when I stay with other people, at a college on campus, all oh, those people in network. It actually exposes myself to them, but people haven't had an opportunity to learn about some of them who and why I'm different to them. So that's where they come into conclusion, the reflection of why the society is not inclusive, especially for people with disability. So what got me depressed? I was bullied. I was taught them I didn't read in situation that not clear that got myself feel in meltdown or being frustrated because I couldn't understand why they do that and even why people create prejudice against me especially uh, what haven't done anything especially uh, that case I don't understand so um, that's all those years of build up since Depression is becoming cyclic, but it's not a part of my disability. But think about it, mental health it can be a leading cause of disability. So that way people are causing a disregard to the impact because of their identity. That's why I feel not included. So having been invited socially, my friend having included me to the activity or doing the conversation or all that kind of stuff. That's what's becoming really challenging. And what I'm trying to realize and understand how do you do this? How do you communicate with what approach? The another impact of this is a very, very highly controversial thing. Millennial and media technology is the bigger distraction than a natural social communication. However, the last 20 years, I've seen from my experiences, transition from childhood memory, being out with, hanging out with kids, everyone is so caring, and don't care about why I'm different, they lovely hang out. That was the heydays before the, the disruption. 
So today, I'm in the twenties, from late to early twenties and all that. Um, it's become a change. We're so focused on phone. We're so focused, spending too much game on the computer. We're focused on the mainstream aspect and the possessive media can be highly controversial, cylinder or mocking people, pranking people, all that. It's become begotten about the natural communication with the people. So um, that's make it be so difficult to interact with people, especially with beginning about the peculiar social skills. So I have psychology for about um, nine, ten years, and I learn about social skills, life skills, and there. But it's really hard to show that to other people because they're passive. They they don't realize they're disrupting. It's actually causing impact. That's where you feel an isolation and not feeling included. So that's a social environment and the misconception is becoming a really big impact. It's that leads towards miscommunication. All the people that I met the last few months, last few weeks, the last year or so, it's becoming a big trend is miscommunication. When I'm trying to say something, that's you know, expectation. It holds me down. That that word of depression. So now this is um, in summary. Depression is the leading cause of isolation. That that's something push you down while you're trying to achieve something. Like it's try to speak up about how you feel, why you want to experience, what you want to gain. So we got to be a passion and compassion, and your career and your aspiration. They are the things are very, very important individuals, especially with people on auditing special because they're great at school, being organized, are very straightforward, and they're very, very blunt at things. It's all about commitment and dedication. So I hope that this means you give me a, a different perspective why uh, depression is not negative for us. It helps us to be a part of your life, feel included, to have an opportunity to be the part of something. So that's really, really important. Especially when you know, learn about the childhood to young adult life in a transitioning age. I understand I'm, I'm pretty young, but time you have to use. So um, uh, looking for your feedback and comments around this uh, this topic. Uh, I really hope that it inspires and gives them some change of social thinking. At a concise, kind of construct. Well, thank you.